one and two and one and two and one and two and one and two. Oh yeah, feel the burn. Hey, what's up? Hey, what's going on? What are you uh what are you up to? I'm training. Okay. What huh? I'm getting ready to play 24 hours of video games. I don't want to cramp up halfway through. Okay. Why are you doing it down here? At the point? Yeah. Isn't this where everyone trains? Good point. Oh yeah, feel it. Donate now at ChachiPlays.com. It's for the kids. Up, up, down, down, left, right, left, right, B-A, B-A, start! Yeah! Find yourself in the Beachview area of Pittsburgh? Check out the official pizza of this show, Slice on Broadway, sharing an abnormal obsession with pizza we can relate to. Check them out at SliceOnBroadway.com and tell them this show sent you. Hey guys, welcome back to our little core water cooler. What? 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 It's a water cooler, right, Mike? And our side of the internet, it's a water. Cooler. That's what it is. Uh, welcome to a very amazing edition of the Rambling Movie Minute. Uh, Malengo is stuck in pirate traffic, so we're going to get started without him. He might uh, join in here momentarily. Uh, we'll see what happens. Uh, in the meantime, I do got the man from the city that knows the most about spider things, Mad Mike from the Bronx. How you doing, sir? I'm doing awesome. I saw Spider Man. I met Batman. This has been a great week, Sorgatron. Awesome. And uh, once again, because it just came in, here's our pizza from Slice on Broadway you see at the top of the show, our sponsor. Uh, thanks a lot for that. And I know we got some guests here from some of the other shows uh, that will be enjoying that. Malengo not coming in again. He got stuck in traffic. Uh, so Making me crave pizza again, Sorg. That's right. So uh, you know, let's hold off a little bit. Hopefully we can get him a little bit for the Spider-Man talk. Uh, but in the meantime, uh, what uh, what did you watch this week other than Spider-Man, Mike? Um, well, other other than the amazing Spider-Man, I decided to take last week to basically pre-game myself, and I watched the entire series of Spectacular Spider-Man. It's not long, right? Like, I mean, it's there's only, like, maybe a season, right? It's, it's two seasons, mm -hmm. and they each have about, like, 20-some-odd uh, episodes. I just, I just, it just came out on Blu-ray. Okay. So, for... 25 bucks at Best Buy, a four disc Blu ray set. That's not of bad. The whole series. Yeah, it wasn't bad at all. And it is my favorite iteration of Spider Man. So I really can't downplay it. Like, I can't stress how much spectacular Spider Man is, like, how good it is. Mm -hmm. I cannot stress that enough. You know, and, and there was actually recently, I forget what site I found this on, but they had a countdown of, like, the best. Uh, you know, iterations of Spider-Man. They even touched on the MTV version, all the old 60s, 80s, 70s versions and everything like that. And they said, and they, they did confer that this is the best iteration was spectacular. I think that was IGN. I think it was IGN. I remember, now I think I about it. Yeah, yeah. I, I am a fan of the uh, Ultimate one. Um, I, I think it's fun. It's a lot of fun. It has a lot of the elements I like from Ultimate Spider-Man uh, with other elements outside of it. Um, I, I love the 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 principal Coulson that's in it and everything. So it's a really good iteration. I think if, I think if that version wasn't the, like didn't come right after spectacular Spider-Man. Yeah. It wouldn't, it wouldn't be given as much flack as it's given because it, it is fun. Like it's a, it's, it's more geared toward children, mm -hmm. which is understandable because it's on Disney. But uh, like the way that they tie it into the Avengers universe when they clearly can't do that in the movies. Yeah. It kind of fills that void a little bit. It does. It does. And I have to say, there's one episode of Ultimate Spider-Man that is my favorite. And it's one where uh, he's trying to take down the Hulk. Mm -hmm. And it it's shot through a kind of first-person perspective because Mary Jane is filming an interview with Spider-Man. And then the Hulk just starts rampaging, and the whole, almost the whole episode is shown through Mary Jane's camera as she's swinging along and everything. It's really nice, cool. Nice, nice. Yeah, they had a lot of fun with that. Um, awesome, awesome. I watched one uh, gaming in color. Uh, this was actually brought up a few weeks ago. Uh, Chachi's. I don't. I don't know if you uh, read a lot of the Insert Coin to Begin site, Mike, but uh, Chachi does his uh, video game things from around the net. One of them was this documentary. Um, mm -hmm. 
a really cool. It, it was one of those um, pay what you want uh, uh, deals. You know, like Louis C.K. Oh, no, I guess Louis didn't do it, but uh, some of the other uh, bigger ones have done that. And and it's about uh, identity and uh, gay gamers in video games, you know, um, oh. them being represented about the communities, about, you know, like some things like the gamer cons or gamer, gamer X, G-A-Y-M-E-R. Um, mm -hmm. So it was real. It was a really good watch, actually. It's only about an hour documentary. Um, I'm trying to maybe uh, bring bring up the trailer here. Um, but uh, again, like uh, a side of things uh, you really don't see in video game, I think. Um, it was actually a Kickstarter to get it going. I, I'm just coming across now. Uh, so it's really good to see, uh, you know, that it kicked off and there's a, there's a big community in there. And so really, it was a really good watch. So crossing over a little bit with our video game friends, uh, to go check that out. Um, but no, if you go to gaming in color, let's say dot com, maybe. Um, well, speaking of the, uh, the gaming community crossing over with our friends from insert coin mm -hmm. on the insert coin website, Alexander Carr has posted a video for Disney infinity. Oh yes, yeah. You mentioning the insert coin made me made me remember this. Uh, and wait, before you get that, it was uh, the site is uh, gamingincolor.vhx.com. If you want to check that out, and again, you can you can buy for a dollar, but it's a pay what you want. You can watch the trailer here, uh, all that kind of excuse me, all that kind of stuff. So uh, go check that out. It's very well. It's very well done. Uh, really good uh, uh, done documentary. Um, and, and it touches on a lot of kind of gaming history, what indies are doing, that kind of thing. So awesome. Uh, so uh, what what's going on that uh, Cars had, had shared again? Well, uh, the Disney Infinity game is one where it's kind of like a toy box type of game. Mm -hmm. Where it's kind of like the Skyrider thing that they have on the Wii. But you buy uh, Disney characters and you put them on the little platform and you can have them interact in their environments. Well, since Disney owns Marvel now... Disney Infinity 2.0, the huge trailer they just released has all Marvel superheroes in it. It had uh, it had all the Avengers, it had Cap, Thor, Nick Fury, Iron Man, Black Widow, Hawkeye. Um, they had they only showed two villains, which I saw were Loki and Modoc, mm -hmm. which great first two villains to pick from. And you also get to see a little bit of everyone's favorite web slinger, Spider-Man. Nice. Which is nice because Spider-Man doesn't get much interaction with the uh, with the Avengers these days, unfortunately. Especially in those movies, yeah, for sure. And it also looked like the Green Goblin was in that. It was in the trailer. Nice. Go check that out. So I guess we should get right to it. Um, we've we've stalled enough. Amazing Spider-Man two this weekend. I figured let's give a non-spoiler edition uh, thoughts on the movie, and then we can dive right into it. Okay. Uh, so first of all, um, well, what, what did you think? It wasn't as good as I hoped it would be, mm -hmm. but it wasn't as bad as people are saying it is. I was shocked. I took a peek at Rotten Tomatoes. I don't know what it is now, but they have a 54% on this thing? Are you kidding yeah, me? It's not that bad. Apparently, Rotten Tomatoes thinks Spider-Man 3 is better than this one. Oh, Which, no! Granted, I, don't, I don't hate on Spider-Man 3. I like Spider-Man 3. But I like this movie. I don't know if I liked it more or less, but probably about the same. Mm -hmm. Because it, it is a cluttered movie. It is. There's a lot going on, but I figure there's a lot going on, but I think it's a lot better organized. Uh, there was certain points where I'm like watching the movie, watching the movie, and I'm like, wait, we're supposed to have like a third villain here. We haven't even touched on that guy yet. Well, we we did actually. Um, and, and, and I was kind of surprised the way they ended it. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, I also think they showed way, way Way, 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 way too much in the trailers. I'm with you. I'm with you on that completely. Because um, there was... The trailers are almost talk about a different movie. A little bit. A little bit. Almost, cause... because they show so many things in... The, like, I mean, this isn't spoilers. Because if you've seen trailers for it, you know that 
they show vulture wings. They show octopus arms. Like, mm-hmm. in the trailer, that's kind of, it's misleading. Yeah, because you do wonder, you get to a point where you do wonder uh, in this movie, um, are they actually going to just go ahead and pull the trigger and we have a Sinister Six by the end of this flick? And maybe that's mm-hmm. the big reveal. Um, I, I, and I hate to say, if you've seen enough trailers of Amazing Spider-Man 2, you've seen all of Paul Giamatti in the movie. This is true. This is true. Uh, so... Um, Generally, I thought it was really good. There, there were there's a lot of intricacies. They're trying to shove a lot of the relationship uh, between Gwen and uh, 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 Peter. Uh, there's mm-hmm. a lot of great Peter moments in this. Oh um, my god! There, and I, Dale DeHaan, or Dane DeHaan, um, fantastic as Harry Osborn. Yeah, fantastic, and yeah. it it helped me picture andrew garfield more as peter parker than the first one did good good uh, now i know um I, and i said this to you before the show I and mean, we're getting slightly spoiler here but but i feel like um they changed enough about spider-man to make me okay you know uh, make me surprised basically right like it's still spider-man there's still this stuff um and they they're definitely changing up the origin and actually i think it's kind of very familiar with how the ultimate spider-man did and, and there's already seas of this in the first one where where his parents his father particularly is very very connected to to his origin uh which again that's i believe from the ultimate version i, I consider this more ultimate spider-man than amazing spider-man in the long run um with this iteration um it's kind of like it it's kind of like a blend up of the ultimate universe and the spectacular universe yeah it is it is um it is but you, you could take from so many different sources now and so many different versions of Spider-Man. Um, mm-hmm. I, I know the biggest thing, like, we're leaving it, and, and, and Missy's skin, why is Mary Jane Watson? Um, well, funny story about that, Sork. Mary Jane Watson was cast and shot scenes for this movie. Really? Yep. Shailene Woodley, the star of the Divergent series, was cast as Mary Jane Watson. Huh. And she was supposed to be in this movie. But I think they realized that, hey, this movie's a bit crowded. Yeah, it is. And I was really worried uh, early in the movie that we were going to get a bit of the uh, Spider-Man 3 syndrome we had with the Venom and, and everything going on. Uh, I'm glad to see we did. Think we kinda do. I still think we kind of do. A little bit. A little bit. Uh, do we need to? I, I, I don't think we can stretch it anymore. I think we're going to have to pull it up into the spoiler zone, Mike. So uh, go yes. and your, do your obligatory intro. You are entering another dimension, a dimension of sight and sound, and where we talk about movies that have just come out. So if you haven't seen them, please stop listening right now, unless you don't care about the spoiler zone. So there you go. If you're on stream, uh, we'll leave this up here, and you can just mute it and watch us. Don't read our lips, and we won't throw any scenes up or anything like that. But in the meantime, uh, let's get right into it. Dude, they killed the, the hell out of... What? Man just... What's that? <laughs> the one guy, the one guy who hasn't seen Spider Man yet, just left the chat room. And there he goes. <laughs> I stopped the video. Go for it. He says. <laughs> um. So, so the biggest thing. Gwen Stacy died. Dead. Doornail. We're done. We're done. Um. Fantastic way that they did that. Fantastic. Oh my god. It was I really, I really good. was on. I I can't remember the last time a movie had me on the edge of the seat because it was like they're going to do it. They're not going to do it. They are going to do it. How are they going to do it? No, they're going to do it this way. No, they're going to do it this way. Holy crap! Um, <laughs> that was like. All right. Go ahead. Go ahead. All right. I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you because um, my girlfriend is not the biggest comic aficionado in the world. Mm-hmm. And as we were, because she was excited to see the movie because she saw the first one, she really liked it. So I was telling her, you know, about the Spider-Man mythos, and I casually mentioned, like in the comics, Gwen Stacy dies, and she was like, "Oh, really?" I'm like, "Yeah, well, I mean, why do you think they have Mary Jane for the rest of it?" She's like, "Yeah, I guess that makes sense." She was watching this movie, and she was thanking me that I told her that in the comics Gwen Stacy dies because she said that she didn't know that. This death scene would have heartbroken her. <laughs> She's so like, likable. She is so likable oh in this my film. God. 
Like, for me, in the comics, with, when Gwen dies, it, it almost feels like, it almost feels sadder because Gwen didn't know why the Green Goblin was kidnapping her. Mm-hmm. She didn't know that Peter was Spider-Man. She didn't know anything about this. In her mind, she was just an innocent victim. But the movie, Gwen knows exactly what she's fucking getting into. She knows exactly what she's getting into. And they even took one of my favorite scenes from the ultimate Spider-Man, Death of Peter Parker, by having Spider-Man's girlfriend run into the bad guy with a big-ass truck. Right before she dies. Or right before he dies. Because Gwen Stacy ran into Electro with a big truck to save Spider-Man. Oh, yeah. Huh. That was the first thing I thought of. I'm like, yeah. Yeah, I like that. I didn't even think of that. Wow. Because uh-huh. that was... I, I, I gotta say, uh, Death of Spider-Man is probably the only comic uh, in, in, in memory that I, I was breaking up. Like, I was about to cry man tears. After I was oh, done reading I, that. I teared up in the store as I was reading it. <laughs> I teared up. I'm not even joking. I teared up in the store as I was reading it. And then they had the epilogue with Aunt May going to the funeral and slapping Captain America in the face. Anyway, we're getting off topic. Yeah, yeah. Anyways, anyways. <laughs> it would be amazing yes. if they did that movie too. But we, we could never do that at this point. Um, I love that Gwen was wearing the same thing she was when she died in the comic. Oh, I didn't even notice that. Well, like I said, I read the comic. I never read the comic. Never read it. Although I did see Death of the Stacy Family trade paperback uh, at the Barnes and Noble <laughs> right before we went over there. Um, so I pulled up the Marvel Unlimited. And I, well, I, I went and searched Death of Gwen Stacy and says this issue and this issue. I'm like, okay, uh, which was a little misnomer. It's just the first issue. Um, it was weird because like Norman Osborn was just in recovery from from having LSD uh, and 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 and. Uh, yeah, Norm- you want to read the stuff beforehand because Norman Osborn and Gwen Stacy technically fathered a child too. What? Yeah. What? It's a it's a weird, awkward phase in Spider Man's life. Uh, going back like, and Doc reading Oc some Oc of those. Bang, Dan May, Doc Ock bang Dan May, Norman bang Gwen. It's all very convoluted. Oh jeez. Oh jeez. <laughs> you know that's my every time I've dipped into Spider-Man it's like there's too much going on. This is too much of a soap opera. Who are these people? Uh and somebody's recovering in a hospital bed somewhere. Never fails. Somebody yes. in, and Peter's blaming himself for it. Anyway, 8 times out of 10 it's Aunt May. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. 8 times out of 10. Um she's been in yeah, All exactly. Right, so Anyways, let's, back let's to the talk movie. about let's talk about um Peter's parents. Okay. I don't know. I feel like that aspect of the movie was unneeded. The entire intro there? Where we thought they the, were super spies for a minute? The intro, the hidden chamber under the subway, which again was still way too clean. <laughs> <laughs> like, I, I mean, I like the fact that they're trying to flesh out Richard Parker. Not many people have done that. No. And it makes logical sense for a guy to wonder who his parents were when they ran out on him. I get that. I get all of that. (laughs) But I, I feel like it should be something that they can save for, like, the creation of the Sinister Six. Mm-hmm. Because... It makes it it ties in more with that, okay, than it does with Spider Man. And I I don't know it just it seemed out of place to me, especially when you already have like, hey, here's Harry Osborn, the person we did not hear anything about in the first movie, but apparently he and Peter have been BFFs for years. And then here's Electro, like Electro had a very good. Background, transformation, and villainness. Yeah. But they rushed Harry Osborne. Oh, for sure. They for rushed. Sure. They rushed. Like, like they like needed... that, was the one thing that, that was the one thing that the Raimi trilogy did incredibly well was Harry Osborne. 
I got a tweet because I, I said how we're spoiling uh, Spider-Man 2. And our boy JP, who helps us with the video over at, uh, uh, for the IWC shows and everything, says, it sucks terribly. The end. I can't. Really? Really? Don't, Are we crazy? I, I read an article where people tried to compare it to Batman and Robin. No, it's not even close to that. I know. Maybe is, I know do, do only not. Spider-Man fans like it, or 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 what? I think I think it, it, they tried to cram too much into it. Mm -hmm. Like if you just kept this about Harry Osborn, if you just kept it about Harry Osborn, and like develop that relationship more, I think it would have been a better movie. Mm -hmm. Because Electro, at the end of the day, was the entree to the – what was the appetizer to the entree that is the Green Goblin. Like, because I've always wanted to see in a Spider-Man movie where Spider-Man takes out a random baddie in the first five minutes. Yeah. And they do, and they do that, and it's fantastic. Did we need to see Rhino in the costume? No. No, we didn't. I, okay, let's talk about that thing. So we get we get the resolution, we get the death, we get all that stuff, and then this and 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 I'm trying to figure out why is this movie still going? Because yes. in the other films, like you had Sad Peter, he walks away, blah blah blah, and we figure we pick up the next one and figure out what's going on. Uh, this one had like an entire extra. I felt like I felt like another twenty minutes um, of of the morning of the process of him finally coming back and 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 the seeds for Sinister Six, um, and finally resulting in Rhino. I'm sorry, I feel like you end with the death of Gwen Stacy. I think so, too. I think you took because away, that, that's, you that's took the win, the you put, you took the wind and the heaviness out of this film by bringing it back to a happy ending. Although you mm -hmm. did the deed, you still kind of took the wind out by, by, by having to, well, he's got to come back. We can't just leave it with Spider-Man no more. I think, I think that's exactly what you do. Mm -hmm. Like, like you have Batman did it. You have Gwen Stacy die. This you is the Empire Strikes Back of the Spider-Man trilogy. Come on. Yeah, exactly. Like you have Gwen Stacy die. You have him being the last person standing there at her funeral, and you have him take the costume and throw it in the trash. And you literally have him walk away as the credits roll. Spider-Man No More. That's how you end it. Yeah, yeah. Because honestly. All right, and I'm going, <laughs> I'm going to kind of out myself on this. I've read the Twilight books. <laughs> okay? I've read the Twilight books. There is a part in the second Twilight book when Edward leaves, and there are literally three pages of months where Bella is just mourning over Edward leaving. And she doesn't do anything. And it just says, like, March, April, May, or January, December, whatever the months are. I don't give a shit. But Peter standing at the gravesite and watching the seasons change, that's what it felt like for me. And I, it felt so, so out of place. Like, if you wanted to start Spider-Man 3 with that, mm -hmm. yes, mm -hmm. go for it. Absolutely go for it and then have him defeat Rhino really quickly and then you can get into the the gentleman or whoever the sh shadowy man is breaking out Rhino, breaking out Electro, who I'm sure probably isn't dead, breaking out Lizard, <laughs> fight, like giving a buzz like, hey, Craven, we've got a big spider guy for you to fight. You know, whatever. Do what you want. Get to the Sinister Six somehow. But it, it, it took a lot of the sting out of Gwen dying. Yeah, it did. It did. That said, the scene with the little kid where he stood in front of Rhino with the Spider-Man outfit on, that was amazing. Yes. And that's why it should have opened Spider-Man 3. <laughs> so let's recut this after the trilogy happens and, and everything. When, when we were able to get the DVD Blu-ray collection and watch it back to back to back. Not such Basically, a big, if not, you marathon the movie, yeah. If you marathon the movies, it'll work a hell of a lot better. It'll work just as good as Star Wars does. Yes. 
There you go. All right. Uh, looks like we're not able to get Malengo here. Uh, we'll, I'm sure we'll get some thoughts on him uh, from him on Spider Man next week. So in the oh, meantime, and Stork, yes. Stork, one more, one more thing. Yes. Uh, Post credit scene, X Men. Oh, X Men. Um, yeah, yeah. It, it felt so out of place. I understand what they're doing it, with it coming out later this month, but I, I just thought it was kind of cool to like have a spider-man movie and x-men clip afterwards like i know they're not crossing over nothing like that is ever happening but it did feel kind of cool we're still admitting that this is marvel in the long run right um and this is uh i i kind of said this after watching that it's like that's a big um disney f you to the other uh companies (laughs) that they can do that that they have enough stroke to say hey no this is a marvel property and now we own this and you're going to do this like that's what it feels like to me. Yeah, I, I mean it's coming out later this month, so really the two films are going to be competing with each other. Mm-hmm. So I I get why they're doing it, but at the same time I'm like, eh, as cool as this is, it doesn't belong here. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> still. So with that, Mike is at uh at Mike. Oh, I'm sorry, at Mike at Mad Mike four eight eight three. Go hit him up with your thoughts on the Twitters. Uh, Mike, you got to go respond to JP out there. I will. And to those of you who do comment, I will defend Spider-Man 3 and Batman and Robin till the death. Oh, oh I, I want to I want to see how this goes. I, I'm going to have to check in on this during the next show. I'm at Sorgatron on the Twitters. You can let me know uh, your thoughts on movies and stuff, too, uh, including this, Gaming in Color, um, and uh, Spectacular and Ultimate Spider-Mans, the stuff that we talked about as well. Go check, check this out. We're over at SorgatronMedia.com. Check out our YouTube for the Brambling Movie Minute um, and Google+. Plus. Apparently, we don't have a Facebook. I didn't realize we didn't have a facebook well we're still figuring out he's still figuring out his site and everything so uh there might be one for that instead so until next time um enjoy the movies